What is going on, guys? Hold the door DFS here at Fantasy Sports Insight. Back for NHL DFS Puck Drop. It is Thursday, February 25th. We have a 10, I repeat, 10-game slate. So uh, this is a big one, but I think there is already some phenomenal plays um, to be had tonight. So we will get to those. And uh, if, if you followed uh, my favorite value line stack yesterday, it would have paid off in a huge way with Kaprizov, Zuccarello, and Rask. So hopefully you can take something out of today's uh, puck drop and cash tonight. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. Let's do uh, a, a comment challenge uh, today. Uh, put in your favorite uh, value of the entire slate that is not the person that is on this cover that we will get to at the winger position. But uh, anybody else is fair game. Uh, so let's get into the slate. Uh, the Flames coming in with a 3.7 implied total here against Ottawa. That is just going to be typical on most of these slates that um, whoever's playing Ottawa is likely going to be one of the biggest favorites and have the highest implied total, which is actually interesting is that the Flames are minus 170, but in a 10 game slate that like that's the biggest favorite of the slate is actually pretty unusual, honestly. Like usually we see at least one at minus 200 or better. Um, the Oilers with a 3.6 implied total here um, against Vancouver. Uh, that game also has a six and a half total. Those are the two games with the six and a half total. So I think there's gonna be a lot of fantasy goodness in those games. Uh, the Lightning with a 3.3 implied total at minus 150 against Carolina again. Panthers with a 3.2 implied total against Dallas and they just, I think they had over 40 shots on goal again tonight. So they are just pounding Dallas right now. And Dallas, I think, won three rip, but um, definitely a team that you want to target because if we know that there's shots, that, that creates floor and shots equals goals eventually. So definitely like the Panthers targeting them again here. Uh, Canadians with a 3.2 implied total as well. All right. Uh, Predators minus 160 is really the only other team I want to mention here. And they are going up, up against Detroit. And then Pitt and Washington with a six implied total. But nothing I love in that game except for um, Melkin, which we'll get to at the center position. So um, the center position at the top, I kind of left it. I left quite a few guys out of my player pool here, honestly. Like Connor McDavid will be chalk, obviously, 9K. Doesn't really matter how expensive he is at this point. Even though we did see like Nathan McKinnon really fail to reach like the 8.8. .8. Price tag today, um, Matthews didn't, I mean, I think he ended up with what, like double digits, but not 20, didn't have a goal. He had two late assists and I think four shots on goal. So uh, dry saddle at 8K, you're getting a, you know, a nice discount. Um, but obviously we just know the consistency and the upside is more there with McDavid. So I think it's worth it to go up 1K in cash. Uh, Mark Shifley has been in just insane form and he will be a pairing with um, my favorite value of the entire slate at the winger position. So I do like 7.1 Mark Shifley and Barkoff is going to be in that same category with the Panthers that um, I think he had another like three, four or five shots on goal in this game too. So Barkov is going to continue to be somebody that I want to target in games that I know there's going to be a ton of shot volume. So uh, at the mid range center position, I think this is where a lot of people will go for their uh, center too. honestly um, Lindholm, uh, obviously he's been a great DFS target all season. And now you're going to get him with, uh, in a great matchup against, um, Ottawa. And I would just check line rushes, but I assume he's still paired with the Chuck. Um, and then Monaghan would be paired with Johnny Goudreau. All of them would play together on the power play. Uh, and then Malkin, I, I, you know, I think they're just daring us at this point to play him at, at mid 5k and he had a goal last game. So I don't mind going back to him here. Um, you know, I think he's probably more talented than those other guys around him, but obviously Lindholm and Monaghan are going to be in better matchups. Um, Peugeot at 4.6, cooling off a little bit, but I still like him for the price tag. Brock Nelson, 4.3 is just kind of crazy. Uh, and you can pair him, honestly, with uh, Buvire uh, at the winger position, who I still think is sub 3K, uh, which is a great little cheap mini stack pairing. And Josh Bailey, honestly, I think he's sub 4K too. So you're going to need a stack there for, you know, 12k uh nico he uh 3.4 you know the price is coming up on him he's going to be a uh you know big minutes eater for uh the devils and i think he will be skating 
Actually, I, actually, he's not skating with Palmieri. Um, that would be Jack Hughes and uh, Janssen. So I think um, Heeshire is fine, but not not my favorite. And then Fasca and um, Dickinson both were in the top six in this uh, game today or in yesterday's game against the Panthers. Um, so both are solid value plays at the center position. Uh, the winger position is loaded, 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 loaded. Uh, Pasternak 8.9. I think on the road against uh, the Islanders, it's just um, you. I prefer at this point to go to McDavid just in a vacuum. And honestly, I prefer to go to Patrick Kane over um, Pasternak at 8.9. Uh, Ovechkin is still in play, but just not putting up the shot volume that we're used to seeing. So out of those top three, I think Patrick Kane is my favorite, honestly, just due to form. And we know he has a great implied floor with his shot total. So Nugent Hopkins would be a GPP pairing for me with uh, McDavid. Bill Forsberg is in a great spot against Detroit. I do worry like just the pace of that game could be so low that, you know, uh, Nashville might only need to score two or three and it's a two to one or three to zero game that they win. So the Chuck would be a pairing with a Lindholm. Uh, he has kind of continued his really good form recently. So in the last three games, so 6.7 is definitely a good spot for him. Uh, Patrick Laine, 6.5, I really like in a matchup with Chicago. Uh, Johnny Goudreau, Johnny Hockey, 6.1. I mentioned that you can pair him with Monaghan. Uh, again, just we haven't really seen like the, the, like the blowout game from uh, Goudreau, like the one that goes like 20 plus. Um, but a matchup with the Senators is definitely a spot that you could finally hit that. Uh, Blake Wheeler. Uh, 5.5, also skating with uh, Shifley and my favorite value to be mentioned here in a second. Uh, Palmieri has had been one of the best players this month, honestly. Uh, and in a matchup with Buffalo, I think he could um, you know, continue to keep that hot streak. I think the last game was the first game he had like sub 10, K, 10 DK points in the last you know week or two. So I really like him. Kapanen uh, skating, I believe, on the top line. We'll have to double check. Um, I think, yeah, top line, top line, or no, he might be with Malkin. Actually, uh, I'll have to double check. I'm pretty sure he's with Crosby and Gensel. And then the second line is Malkin, Rust, and uh, Aston Reese, I think, is going to be on the second line today against uh, Washington. So all in play. Boone Jenner, always just kind of like a cash cow guy. Typically, he's more 4 or 5K, so I really like him at this price tag. And he is basically paying off his price tag every slate. Drake Batherson, you know, one of Ottawa's young studs. He's just been exceptional in the last three games. He's had like 15 DK or more in the last three. So really like him. And then the chalk value of the slate will likely be uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois at 3K. Uh, not really sure after the last game that he performed really well on this top line. I'm not really sure how they just forgot that. Oh yeah, I remember before he was traded, he was like mid 5K, 6K or whatever it was. And then he started to get benched and his price dropped out of, out of thin air. And then he got traded. And then they just said, well, he hasn't played for like three weeks. Let's just put him at dead minimum. And then, oh, yeah, let's he just crushes his first game or whatever. He was back. And, yeah, let's let's move him up to 3K. Let's see what his ownership is at 3K. So um, probably just eat the chalk uh, in cash. And, and if not, I like a lot of these other guys um, at value plays. So. And Dubois is our cover boy, right? Like he, ha he, this is a chance for somebody like him to get on the cover. Uh, Roman Yossi, uh, 6.9, uh, decent. Again, don't love the pace of the game, but I think uh, the peripherals will be there for him. I do prefer Tyson Burry or Darnell Nurse. And, and still Darnell Nurse is just getting the tiebreaker slightly for me, just because he averages slightly more peripherals. And the power play is not, um, he's getting power play two time out there. So if you think about it, like their power play too doesn't just like pull off McDavid and Drysaddle and Nugent Hopkins. It's basically subbing out Chase on, and then the rest just stay out there, and then they swap Barry and Nurse. So, you know, you're still getting probably half the time of Nurse and half the time with Barry. Uh, so both both are really great plays. McAvoy has just been insane, and you and those of you that have watched these videos, I've talked about McAvoy a ton lately, and now his price takes finally over six K. Um, just the absence of um, Tory Krug and getting that top. Um, kind of like defensive defenseman offensive position from the blue line on the power play has been just a great for him. Uh, Seth Jones continues to tear it up. 5.8 K is too cheap in a phenomenal matchup with the Blackhawks. 
Aaron Eckblad had a lot of really good chances again today uh, with Dallas, and I think he will continue to benefit from a lot of shot opportunities um, in the game today against Dallas. So 5.3 is nice. Uh, Anderson and Giordano, honestly, I didn't have room to put Giordano in here, are both uh, great plays against Ottawa. Uh, Shea Weber, sub, sub 5K is pretty crazy. So I think if you just know his talent and um, he will get back to form where he's shooting the puck a lot more, um, he's just way too cheap, especially relative to, to Petrie, you know, so Petrie, Petrie, 4.8K. I really like Shea Weber. Jakob Slavin at 4.3 has been um, just kind of uh, a guy that gets it done every slate for Carolina. Block shots, uh, puts pucks on the net, you know, has decent uh, assist equity. So I like him here. Uh, Tanev at 3.8K is going to be your like defense stat stuffer. Um, so gets a lot of block shots, you know, is really active when he's on the ice. Not doesn't always have to put up like 20 minutes of ice time. It can be really active. Uh, Matheson, uh, this is where you're going to really want to pay attention to the news today. Chris Letang and did not finish the last game. Um, so I think if he's out, like Matheson is going to continue to just kind of like increase in value here at 3.7. And that's why I have Marino there at 2.8. Um, they did uh, send uh, P.O. Joseph to the taxi squad today, which kind of like makes me think that Latang might still play. The fact that you get rid of one of your defenders that has been playing an increased amount of time when Latang was out. But if Latang is out, then uh, Matheson and Marino are both really nice. I think Matheson is honestly really nice, even if, even if Latang is in. Uh, Lindell has been just a uh, shot on goal and block shot monster recently. And a lot of that is those block shots when you're seeing a team like Florida just fire 50 to 60 shots, uh, shot attempts, you know, uh, not obviously them all getting on net, but um, because some of them being blocked by somebody like Lindell or Klingberg. So, or Alexiak has been uh, also a good value play. So all these guys are in play. Um, I think Matheson and Marino could be really nice if Latang is out. Uh, all right. Uh, the two favorite stacks are going to be, um, and actually the second one, like Bergeron, Marchand, Pasternak, and McAvoy, I, I don't like think they just like project like the second best. I think there's the most leverage for them. Honestly, I think they're going to be the lowest owned. Um, I think so many people are going to stack uh, the, the top Edmonton stack. And then I think a lot of people will go like, uh, like Patrick Kane to bring it um, with Suter or, um, they might even go, I don't know, maybe they see the Lightning as a big favorite and they go with Stamkos and Point and Hedman. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I just think Bergeron, Pasternak, Marchand line goes pretty under-owned here. And obviously McDavid, Drysaddle, Nugent Hopkins with probably Barry or Nurse will be more popular, especially if you can find a nice cheap stack. And there's plenty of cheap stacks. Like I, I was like, ah, what, which one do I, you know, plug in here as value? But um, Hughes, Palmieri, and Janssen is, is not necessarily like super cheap, more of a mid-range stack but i do really like that uh but stutzel stefan and batherson um all super cheap all sub 4k um even though it, they are going to be the biggest underdog of the slate we've seen ottawa on all these slates you know the chuck has been just unreal and he's a great play today as well um but ottawa hangs it with it they're not just going to like take a six nothing pounding right like they want to they even though they're not going to play a lot of defense they're going to fire the puck and they're going to put out um, some goals. So I uh, definitely like, you know, using the cheaper guys that you can get and attack um, with Ottawa. So thanks again for listening, guys. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like, put your favorite value on the slate, not named Pierre-Luc Dubois. Probably maybe there's somebody that I didn't even mention in this video. So um, that means that I will gain some knowledge from you as well. So thanks a lot for listening. See you later.